Jorge, I don't know if it's worth getting all dolled up for this reunion. I mean, it was a little boring if you ask me. Hey dolls, it's me, Wilma Fingerdoo, with the Fingerdoo Review of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 15, Episode 15, a.k.a. The Reunion. But before we get started, I need to send some love out to this week's Tipperdoos who used that YouTube thanks button just below this screen. William Searcy, Patrick Hartman, Eric Cool, and my birthday twin, James Montgomery. Happy birthday, James. I also want to send some love out to my YouTube queen, Martha Anastasia, showing me some birthday love old school through my PayPal link, along with Letty and her man with the good ideas, Greg, and Vivian Bourbonnet, who either thinks I look 39 or she needs new glasses, bless her. I also want to thank Sean Smith, who used my link tree link on Instagram. And finally, a huge hug to Robert Watson, Chloe Demure, Martha Grunwald, and Aunt B for their fabulous birthday gifts. Thank you all so, so much. I also want to welcome to the Fingerdoo family on Patreon, new at the Princess tier, Bryce Bard, a.k.a. Ella Mayo III on YouTube. And... Ross James, who is now a diva on my Patreon page. If you'd like to support the Finger Do Review with a tip or do, or joining us on Patreon, the links are down below. Now, oh, hey, drink me. Oh, 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 what's, oh, look, oh, 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 hot, hot. Oh, look, this is my birthday gift from Aunt B. She sent me a lovely uh, teacup uh, with poppies on it. Ooh, poppies will make you sleep. And a stunning array of teas. Um, from the Ahmad Tea Company. And this one is uh, green tea and mint, isn't it? You didn't put anything extra in that, did you? Next time, could you? Mmm, <laughs> yummo. I also, Chloe Demure sent me my lovely signature necklace, Wilma Fingerdew. I feel like Carrie Bradshaw in Sex in the City. Although, it's not good sex or a great city. I'm just going to say. It's nobody's fault. It's really just me. Poor planning. There I said it. Okay, the reunion. I won't lie, what a wank. Someone owes me an hour of my life back. The only good thing I have to say is thank God I didn't have to sit through commercials too. It was so obviously scripted and so heavily directed that I could barely stand it. There were a couple of moments when, well, I thought the queens were going to get into it, but... They either reined it in or the whole situation got edited out. Either way, they're smart. They're thinking ahead. They're protecting that drag race coin is all I'm saying. The only reason this was worth watching at all was to remind me what the heck happened this season. It was such a long season and there were so many queens that I really did need a reminder. Seriously, who is Princess Poppy? Something I was looking forward to was seeing Sugar and Spice again. I was wrong. I totally forgot what they're like when they're together and full of sugar. Even when Rue asked them what they'd learned on the show, Sugar tossed some word salad into the air that more or less amounted to her being stronger than she thought. But when Spice tried to share her thoughts, bless her pretty head, she didn't have any. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about more important things like who looked good and who didn't. I'm just going to start by saying Lucy did not. I didn't get her outfit. She looked like the human equivalent to being shot out of a cannon. Finger don't, seriously. And poor Princess Poppy. Who? Exactly. One of my fabulous Patreoners said that this was an homage to Rebecca Glasscock's entrance look from season one. Another queen who didn't win. No wonder I don't remember her. In her voiceover, Poppy said, well, she's quitting drag. Does that mean she's already sold off all her wardrobe? All I can say is I hope she saved a good dress for next week. Seriously. Because this is a finger don't. Speaking of a good dress, what Amethyst had on clearly wasn't it. Did she build this look around that stuffed raccoon? Or just lose a bet? Which is it? Seriously. Although I didn't love Anitra's ensemble, I will say this. It looked like it would be comfy to sit in. Still, finger don't for the finalist. I'm just going to say it. Aura looks stunning in her white deconstructed leather jacket dress, but then, well, she always does. Finger do. Irene Dubois pulled out all the stops with her stunning outfit. It was like a 3D printed exoskeleton and totally worth a of a finger do, I'm just going to say. Gorgeous. Although I didn't love Jax's outfit, she did look good in it, so finger do. 
Lux looked gorgeous. From hairline to hemline and beyond, she was it. You must be this glamorous to get on this ride, the house down boots, mama. Which is drag speak for finger do. Malaysia was giving me high drag Hollywood glamour, which I love, so I gave her a finger do too. Seriously. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha looked pretty much the same, but with more eyeshadow and bigger eyebrows. Still, she's gorgeous and well, I liked her yellow plaid moment, so I gave her a finger do. I'm going to go ahead and say I did not like Mistress's outfit. The proportions were wrong, and I didn't get it. But it was well made, and I'm sure worth every penny. Still, a penny saved. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to give Mistress an elusive pinky do. Not her first. Sugar and Spice look just like their Bratz dolls. Thank goodness they brought them for reference. Seriously, do they get paid to lug those things around? I'm going to give them one finger do. They can share it. Robin looked okay. Her outfit was well made and all, but it didn't wow me. I still gave her a finger due because, well, it wasn't this. And, oh my God, where was this glamour throughout a titty season? We got a little taste of this on the night of a thousand Beyonce's, but seriously, she might have lasted longer if she'd whipped out this ode to John Leguizamo's finale look in Tu Wong Fu, I'm so serious. Brava! Spectacular! Finger due for us titties! I didn't think I'd ever get to say it. Sasha looked fantastic, but then she usually does. Still, this was very similar to the dress she wore last week for the finale, so the impact wasn't as big for me as I really wanted it to be. Still, finger do, because, <laughs> again, it wasn't this. For the most part, this reunion was broken down into categories with video montages and very little interaction from the queens. In fact, if Amethyst and Robin hadn't talked about their brief hookup yet again, I wonder if we'd have heard from them at all. All I know is my opinion of that storyline is still a resounding, who cares? Because clearly Amethyst didn't, bless. There was also some confusion for me for some of the storylines that were clearly lost due to the way Ho edit. I mean, this is probably why Mistress had been talking about all the stuff she stole off the set in recent days, because clearly that was some of the footage that we lost in the way Ho edits, because Rue brought it up. Apparently, if it wasn't nailed down, Mistress took it. Good for her. I know if I were in that workroom, a bolt or two of fabric and a whole lot of Anastasia Beverly Hills makeup would have found its way into my dance bag. I'm so serious. It's a huge bag. I fit lots of it. Of course, Mistress wasn't going to be singled out. She threw Anitra under the bus by pointing out that she'd taken a light bulb or two. A light bulb? I know that times are hard, but seriously, a light bulb? Of course, being the first season with twins in the cast had to be acknowledged and... Well, that eventually led the script to them talking about internet queens and the validity of their drag. Mistress had issues with the TikTok stars right off the hop, but then she is the self-proclaimed gatekeeper of drag. Irene, the season 15 pork shop, felt the same way, but since both the queens outlasted her, her point was moot. That's right, I said moot. Of course, more than a hot minute was spent discussing Mistress's cavalcade of errors, which didn't make it any less annoying. There was also a montage of the queens arguing over who was in second place for the challenges they didn't win. Okay, it was mostly Lucy. And can I just take a moment to say that I felt badly for Lucy this entire reunion. It was painfully obvious that she was in her damage control era. I've never witnessed anyone obviously hiding her true feelings behind a fake smile so badly before. Well, who hadn't at least lost out to winning an Oscar at any rate. In fact, a great deal of this second-place debate revolved around both Lucy and Lux. Who did better in the All Queens Go to Heaven Challenge? Who had the better interview in the 50-50 News Challenge? But mostly, it was Lucy being pissed about not winning. Period. I will say this. It felt like Lux got the memo, finally, about being overly full of herself because she took more than a couple of opportunities to compliment the other queens on their efforts. Such as those efforts were... Maybe to make Lucy feel less attacked, Rue had a video message from Kevin Bacon complimenting her on her star turn in Wigloose. And despite her off-key performance during the talent show and the twins trying to quantify its success, Rue also pointed out that Lucy's song Let Loose has gone viral. Here's to Lucy. Now that's a win for sure, seriously. Of course, the memorable lip syncs were brought up, not just Anitra versus Sasha in the Lala Perusa challenge, but also Anitra and Marsha Cube's iconic acrobatics in their lip sync for your life. 
I liked Irene's offhanded comment about being excited when Anitra was flubbing a challenge because it meant that we were going to get to see her lip sync again. Or she's just mean and was hoping to see her get eliminated. Who can say? They also talked about why Malaysia picked Marsha, Marsha, Marsha for her Lollapurusa round when everyone wanted to see Malaysia pick Mistress, including Mistress. Clearly, Malaysia made what she thought would be a safe bet by picking Marsha because, well, clearly she thought she could beat Miss Cubed. That's a good enough reason for me. But Malaysia had a list of reasons why she picked Marsha that just ended up sounding like a whole lot of backpedaling, if you ask me. Thank God she looked good, is all I'm saying. Seriously. Speaking of the Lala Perusa, everyone was still shocked that Mistress beat Jax, especially as titties, who thought Jax should have won. Can you imagine if she did? Something else that we obviously lost in the Way Ho edit was that Aura had a crush on Poppy. Who? Apparently, Poppy'd still hit that even though Aura announced that she's getting married. Don't send gifts. I wasn't planning to. Actually, in all seriousness, Aura would rather you make a donation to the ACLU Drag Defend Fund instead of sending her gifts. I concur. I don't know why, but some past Drag Race queens had some questions for the Season 15 cast. Coco Montrese, another queen who had makeup issues, asked Marsha about her makeup game. Apparently, well enough that Marsha's launched a makeup line. Like mascara and lip gloss is a makeup line. <laughs> Asia O'Hara was on hand to ask Sasha Colby who her favorite drag queen was. She said it was former Continental winner Monica Monroe, but I have to be honest, I wasn't really listening because I found those blue contacts she was wearing distracting. They look so painful. Seriously, Asia Sky asked Robin if she could get her a deal on a big screen TV. Apparently, Robin used to work at Best Buy and, well, sometimes did it in her own interpretation of Rebecca Glasscock's season one entrance look. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. Season 10 winner Aquaria asked Irene about trolling the other queens. Apparently, because Irene didn't get a chance to play with the other queens in the workroom, she did it online. Not that anyone seemed bothered. Mistress blocked her, and regardless of what Spice had to say about Irene's karma, Irene still pointed out that she had one more money than Spice did for season 15. Although, I think Spice still wins with all the TikTok queens she's raking in. Hey, it's not a competition. Oh, no, wait, it is. Derek Berry and her eyeliner asked Lucy if she's a queen who blames it on the edit. Lucy's answer? She's a hack. No, wait, she was hacked. I really wasn't listening. I'm still not sure why, but there was also a moment or two of some of the drag queen's moms calling out the queens for coming for their children. Robin's mom asked Mistress why she shaded Robin's entrance look wig. Come on, you have to ask? Even I read Robin for all that packing tape showing through her lace. Seriously! If Robin's mom was a better mom, she would have told her about that before she walked through the workroom doors. I'm just saying. Aura's mom came after Spice for saying that Aura should have been in the bottom for Snatch Game. Spice tried to talk her way out of it, and, well, maybe she did in the theater of her mind, but for the rest of us, drag queens say what? Again, due to this season's way ho edit, there were some other moments that we had to check in on, like the unseen reading challenge moments. They weren't all worth watching. Some were awkward, like, well, Lucy going in on Amethyst, but I will say this, as titties killed it. Bricks get laid. Hilarious! I wish I was a brick. Of course, the queens who didn't make it to episode 5 were given a chance to read their castmates, and all I can say is, there's a reason most of them didn't make it that far. Sugar read Irene, but it was really more of a read for Robin, because even though she was eliminated on episode 1, Irene still got more camera time than Robin. It's funny because it's true. Spice read Sugar for being like Michelle Visage and living in someone else's shadow. Meh. We got a twofer from Poppy. Who? She read Aura for having a ripped ass, to quote Aura, well, Poppy would know, and Poppy said she gave Lucy COVID, which is why she has no taste. It's funny because Lucy doesn't. Irene read Sasha for being touched by an angel and, well, silicone. Sasha made it funny by saying, that's you. Irene also tried to read as titties for her accent, which was unfunny and awkward, and all Irene got out of his titties was, okay, white girl. I would have just slapped her. My only question was why Lucy got to read Amethyst and Mistress again. Didn't she already win that challenge? Does that put her up to seven wins now?
One thing was true about season 15 of Drag Race. It entered its gate era. There was Heavy Metal Gate, where Mistress and Lux tried to grab the Heavy Metal Song for the Girl Group Challenge. There was Baby Bump Gate, where Lux argued that Lucy's Beyonce look wasn't pregnant enough. Of course, there was also Heaven Gate, where <laughs> Lucy and Lux fought for the lead in Wig Loose. And finally, 40 Inch Gate, where Lux and Irene debated the length of Lux's wig. Personally, because she was involved in all the gates, I think the whole season should have been called Luxgate. So does she probably. One of my favorite moments during the gate discussion was Lux defending her wig by saying her mother made it and that it was an heirloom. Another moment that made me giggle was when Rue asked Mistress why she called Lucy fake, Mistress asked, now or throughout the whole show? It's so funny because it's so true. To make the queens who were eliminated early feel better about themselves, we got a look at the runway looks they didn't get to show off. Amethyst showed off her shredded look, which was a nod to the Dennis the Menace movie. Aura's Night of a Thousand Beyoncés was absolutely breathtaking. Malaysia's Everybody Say Glove look was stunning, but seemed to be more about hearts than gloves. But the star of the show was Irene Dubois' Puffer Please look. Oh my God. Going with a 20s theme for a very modern reference was brilliant, not to mention that flawless makeup. I'm just going to say it. We really got the short end of a stick not having Irene on this season longer. Seriously. <sighs> Speaking of outfits, the queens got to toot or boot some of the looks from the season. There were no surprises here. We all know who brought it and who didn't. The toots were Sasha's puffer please look, Natch. Malaysia's entrance look. Anitra's crystal couture was another clear toot. Clear. Crystal. See what I did there? Lux's crystal look, Robin's who is sheer look, and Aura's nightmare look all got toots, although Irene did boot Aura's acting. Just saying. The boots were Marsha's nightmare runway, Lucy's ball look, and Jax's nightmare look. No arguments here. And the jury was still out on whether Mistress's Night of a Thousand Beyoncés was a toot or a boot. I know how they felt. I didn't hate it, but I would have liked to have seen it without the backup puppets. Just saying. I thought they made her look fat. And, because it's a thing now, thank you, La La Ree, they had to award the Golden Boot Award. Last season's winner, Maddie Morphosis, popped in wearing crocheted couture to announce the winner. It was down to Marsha, 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 and Jax's tie-dyed looks, and Estiti's Metallica runway. And, well, the winner was Estiti's. She won something, finally. Of course, Lex's monologue on who should go home was discussed. Why the speech? Who cares? Of course, Lucy was hurt because she felt it was premeditated and unnecessary, and then red Lux for wearing a wig off a puppet. Stinnies, on the other hand, loved Lux's monologue because, well, she was still salty over Lucy picking her name to go home. Naturally, in light of what she just said to Lux, Lucy apologized to Stinnies and admitted, in retrospect, she would have picked Lux because she had trouble with the rusical choreography. Lux took immediate umbrage by pointing out the other queens who had difficulty too, including Lucy. I have to say, this was the closest we got to a real moment throughout this whole Rue union, which is probably why Rue changed the subject to move it along. Coward. There was some behind-the-scenes celebrity footage to watch, but the standout moment for me was Michelle Visage's sneeze. I know a lot of people don't believe that's how she sneezes, but I have to say, that's my whole life. Don't ask me why, but I've always screamed my sneezes. I can't help it. Another real moment was the Queens talking about all this anti-drag legislation that's being passed in some of the states. Aura talked about how she's worried about performing in her home state of Nashville, as did Malaysia, who toured there recently. Robin talked about being the first drag queen to speak at Yale Law about the drag queen laws. Irene pointed out that the anti-drag laws are really aimed at trans people, and Sasha admitted that she was worried about being arrested for something as common as using a bathroom. It was a good moment for them to have that really should have been given more time. Seriously. Speaking of governments, Connecticut's Lieutenant Governor and its LGBT caucus had a message for Amethyst, Lucy, Robin, and Jack, saying how proud they were of them. Lucy got emotional about their message because of how unwelcome she felt living in her own state. Of course, Jax had to move out of that state to feel welcome, but I guess there wasn't any time left to mention it after Lucy had hogged, I mean, expressed her emotion. Of course, the chatter on social media was discussed. Rue asked the queens if they feel muzzled by the potential clapback on social media. 
For the most part, the queen seemed to follow Lux's lead by blocking haters, but still, Mistress had her Instagram account suspended three times for arguing with Marsha. The hate is real. I also thought it was funny for Rue to tell them to pay it no mind. Easy for a millionaire to do from the comfort of her ranch. Just saying. There was also a sizzle reel highlighting the top four, but the best moment for me was the unseen footage of Rue telling Sasha how amazed she was by her. And I quote, I'm the fucking queen of drag. I'm amazed by you. Well, she better win now. And finally, I thought it was wonderful that World of Wonder honored the stellar drag queens that our community has lost recently. Darcel, Lily Savage, Heclina, and Crystal Woods. Rest in perfection indeed. Cheers. Seriously. So, what did you think of the reunion? Yay? Nay? Meh? Did seeing the season highlights remind you of things that slipped your mind? Better yet, did this reunion change your opinion on your favorite to win? Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And check out my links for ways you can help support the Finger Do Review. Until next week's finale, miss me! Mwah! Seriously. Oh, this season was so handled and manipulated and choreographed. I miss the early seasons when Tammy Brown was telling Rue off and things like that. And queens were throwing wigs at each other. Oh. I mean, I don't, I'm not saying people should be mean, but that was natural drama. There was nothing to watch here. And, the, and then the moments or the moment or two where people did seem to get a gob on them. I thought for sure as titties was going to pop off at one point. She didn't. But I get it. They want to work. They want to, they want to come back for an all stars. They, they, they don't want to uh, pearl themselves. I'm just saying, bless their hearts. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see that finale. I expect there to be upsets and surprises and shenanigans, but there probably won't. <laughs>